Um, my name is Mike Howell. I'm the Area Vice President for Gallagher Benefit Services. We're actually located in Wichita. This is Alicia Davis. She's an account manager. Um, we work with, with companies on, on employee benefits. We've worked with over 30 school districts in the state of Kansas. At one time I worked on the state of Kansas account. I mean, I understand it very, very well. Been doing what I do here for about 32 years, so I, I do have a lot of knowledge of what, what's out there. Gallagher, as a company that we work for, um, we're the fourth largest employee insurance company in the world. Um, we're very, very large. We have lots of, lots of uh, back room, lots of support um, that help people out. We do business in 150 com or 140 country or 50 countries. We have 680 sales offices around the United States. We do every type of insurance. Your district's actually the property and casualty insurance is actually being run through another arm of our company right now. We saved you guys a bunch of money last year on your property and casualty. But we're here today to talk about employee benefits. So um, we're not talking about your 401k and your property today. It's just, it's just the employee benefits. Um, the uh, current issues that, go ahead, that, Alicia. The current issues that we kind of have right now is you guys are enrolled in a plan and 98% of you are enrolled in the same plan. Although you have two options, two medical carriers, we're all in the same plan. And you don't really have a choice of what the, that coverage is going to be year from year. You don't get to make decisions. The state says, here's what we're doing. Here's the rate increase. Here, you, here's what you get. That's, that's okay until when you don't have control of that and you don't know how the plan's working for you and you just keep paying millions of dollars for a benefit that you don't know what you're getting. That's, that's different. This is, a, this is one of the district's largest line items outside of your salaries. And you have very little, if any, control of what the cost of that plan is or how that works. And that's, that's kind of the scary part of it. Um, again, most of you are enrolled in the same plan. In the last year since I started working the district, the, the costs have gone up $850,000, and you guys have the same thing you had a year ago, and nothing's changed. So when the district gets money from the state, and your costs went up $150,000, and you're a person sitting there saying, well, gosh, they don't even use the insurance. I haven't been there but one time this year, and it was a checkup, and I'm not going to get a raise. That's what we're here to kind of talk about. And we have all spectrums across the board of how that works. Here is the claims, and when I talk about why you don't have any control, in 2015, you had $5,961,000 in medical claims. Your prescriptions were $1,138,000. Dental was 278000 So the overall expense out of the district was $7,379,000. Um, $7,379,369. We don't know what that was spent on. We know it was dental, we know it was medical, but we don't know that we have one large claim, did we have you know, a couple large claims, did, were those pulled out? No, we just get, here's what the claims were, and that's what's made this really challenging to go out into the market, which we did, and try to get someone to look at this. Now you jump ahead a year, your claims are down $1.6 million for 2016 on medical. Your RX is very similar. Your dental went up slightly at 309000 So there was a $5,770,000 spend on claims. Your premiums didn't go down. They went up. You guys are paying more, and they're going up again this year. And this year, we have basically, when we started looking at this, we had claims for the first five months. And there's nothing shocking. It actually looks pretty good. But again, to an insurance carrier that we sent this out to on RFP, they, they have very little information to say, boy, this is a good group to write or not write. So it was, it was tough to go represent you in the marketplace to see what really is out there. But we did that. Um, one of the things that led up to us looking in the market, we wanted input. So you guys remember the survey last spring that was sent out to you guys? We put that together, and I just wanted feedback. I wanted to know, okay, what, what are people thinking? What do they think of the plan you have? What do you think of the... Uh, the, the dental, the medical, um, what's your most important thing to you? We had 161 employees participate, 30 employee spouses, 70 employee children, 65 families. You can see the percent of people that represented a, of those enrolled in healthcare. So that question we could devise from that to tell you that you had 66% of the families who have health insurance did the survey. So we, we know that. 87% of the people have employee and children. There's 81 of you. 
87% of you participate. So we, we got pretty good responses from that. Um, when we looked in the survey, we asked the question, what's the most important component of ranking, medical, uh, uh, ranking the medical plans? Cost of premiums was significantly by far the highest thing that you guys rated. Yeah, you could have picked three or four of those things as being equally important. I get that. We had some feedback, and I agree with that. But we were trying to say, what's, what jumps out? You're not any different from any other district we've ever done the survey for. What's different is 49% of your group are single, and you pay nothing for health insurance. And that still was the number one answer. So if you're not paying anything for health insurance, and you're ranking that as the most important thing, it means you want it to be free, or... I mean, it doesn't make sense. In the survey, we did have people say, hey, you know, give me, give me some money. I take the insurance because it's free. Okay, we had those responses back in the survey. If it's free, why wouldn't you take it? The reasoning for that simply is, if 10 people take it and they don't really need it, they have coverage elsewhere, it costs the district $87,000 a year. So if you didn't really need it, and it wasn't, you didn't have to have that insurance, that's an expense, again, that goes in that piece of pie that you can, you can allocate for different things, like raises or different things. So just to have you think about that. Go to the next one, Alicia. Um, how often do you your family visit the doctors for medical needs? 14% of the group, one to two times a month. 40% um, goes once every six to 12 months. And 46% go once a year. That's, so that's... That's information we want to know as we look at how do you design the plan. 86.3% um, have visited the doctor for a routine physical exam in the last year. That is phenomenal. So the state's wellness program is actually getting people to go do things. And that would be something going into the future we would say you need to keep doing. But maybe even give you guys incentives for doing it on top of getting a discount on the premiums. Maybe you get something for doing it. And we can get that up to 100% would be wonderful. On average, how much do you spend on prescriptions? 73% um, spend basically less than $50 a month on prescriptions. We know you spent $1.1 million, so we, we know there's an expense out there, but we're looking at that at 73% and you're paying a percent of 20%. A lot of people here take generic drugs. Most of the schools that we work with average between 86 and 90% utilization on generics. The, the market has pushed that, so that's pretty normal. And those are the least expensive drugs for you. So when we talk about the plans, I'm making a point to that. Um, the results here kind of represent what's called the 85-15 rule. Anyone heard, ever heard that in insurance? Okay. What it means is if I have a group of 100 people, 85% of the total claim spend of this group is going to come from 15% of the population. 15% of the population... Um, is, it's 85. So 85% 85 of the population has 15% of that spend of $5 million. That's, you're not unusual. You're like every group that's out there. That's just how it works. The 15% changes the people who fall in there. I've been in the 15% club. I have a spouse at the age of 40 had breast cancer. We were in the club. I broke my neck on a four-wheeler six years ago in an accident. Cracked my C4 or two places. I'm lucky to be standing here. I was in the hospital for basically 14 hours, and my spend was $21,000, and they did nothing but looked at me. The insurance company, obviously, at discounts, they ended up paying about 6,000 bucks for that. But that's how expensive it gets quick to have that. So I've, I've been in the club to spend money, I, I'm, so I'm not ever calling anyone out, but I'm making a point. That's how it works. So when you have one medical plan, and everyone's in the same plan, 15% benefit greatly by a plan in any given year that's very low in out-of-pocket exposure, and 85% help pay for that. That's how that works. So what we did is we got information from the state. We got some limited information from the state. These amounts of money that were paid in, paid out, that's all basically we had. I checked with the district. Do we have people on disability? Were there any people out last year for claims? We're trying to get information to share with the insurance companies trying to bid on this. We did have two carriers bid. Blue Cross and Blue Shield bid on your group, and we're going to show you their bid. Um, we also had Aetna, which is the other option you have as a state employee out here in Hayes, 
with the same medical plans, Aetna is the other carrier. Their rates are higher. Don't blame me for picking the one that's lower at, at, at Hayes. Um, Blue Cross and Blue Shield is, I mean, they're, the main, they're a large insurer in Kansas. They are domiciled in Kansas. They're a subsidiary of other Blue Cross and Blue Shield companies. So if you travel here and you decide you're going to go to Kentucky, Kentucky has Blue Cross and Blue Shield, but it's not related anywhere, shape, or form to the Blue Cross in Kansas other than by name. So if you eat at Spangles here and you eat at a Spangles restaurant someplace else, they're owned by different people. They have the same name. It's the same thing. Um, Blue Cross is a great company. There's nothing there. We wanted them to bid on this. They had the best chance of bidding on it because they paid the claims. They know what the claims were. It's in their system. We just didn't get the information to pass it on. Aetna, who the other option was, is a 160-year-old company. They have 40,000 employees in the United States. They insure 340,000 people in Kansas. They do the city of Hayes here. That's who the city has. Um, 800 of their employees are dedicated purely to the public sector, to companies that do cities, counties, um, municipalities, and schools. 800 employees of their company, that's all they do. Um, and they insure 3.1 million people in school districts and, di and different things just like that. So they're a very large company. So don't, I know all you, if you get kind of west of Sline, everyone knows Blue Cross. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there are other companies and they're much bigger companies. In Kansas, there's really three major players. There's United Healthcare, there's Aetna, and there's Blue Cross. Which is the largest insurer of the three? United Healthcare. Who's second? Aetna. Who's third? Blue Cross. United Healthcare has 200,000 employees. Their network is nationwide, same as, as Aetna. So they're, they're very large companies who invest money into having tools and things for you. If you don't know about it, it's not your fault. It just hasn't been out here to, to learn about. Okay, so the current facts. 98% of you guys are enrolled in one medical plan. The state decides what the plan is and tells you here it is. Um, the district has a responsibility by the contract of the state to pay 95% of your premium. You got a question? Real quick, back on the last slide. Do you have a site where the people can see the providers for Edna. Yeah, and I'll touch on that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, we can do that. We we actually her question was in case you didn't hear it. Do we have a site that people can see the the network with Aetna? We ran what's called a geo access, and it basically it tells how many primary physicians, specialists, hospitals are by a, a mile a zip code mileage from Hayes. There was no difference between Aetna and Blue Cross. In some instances, actually Aetna had 100%, Blue Cross had 98%. So someone was either new, not in their system. So Blue Cross ran that report and gave it to us, and Aetna ran that report and gave it to us, and I made it available to you in the, that, that file. So you can look that up. You actually have the breakdown of who the doctors are by, by every town around here as well. Um, anyway, the district is, res is responsible by contract to pay 95% of the premiums. You guys currently are having 100% paid by your district. Last year, the state came out and said, hey, the employees are to pay $12 of the dental cost. And you guys, it was absorbed by your district. So again, it doesn't seem like a lot of money, but multiply it times 541 people times 12 months, and there's, that's an expense. The district currently um, pays 55% of the dependent coverage costs. The, the, state, um, the state actually only is requiring 39% at this point in time. That has come down as the rates keep going up, so they're requiring less of a contribution. Again, we haven't changed anything and not necessarily proposing that you have to change it, but it's part of the decision making that everyone needs to understand. Um, there is a large participation in the wellness program. Um, some of you get a $20 discount per month for participating. Um, again, that's a great deal and it's a great incentive and I'm all, I'm all in favor of that. The uh, medical rate increases um, went up July 1. So this year, in the middle of the year this summer, the district just took a $390,000, $94,000 increase in cost. Again, you didn't see anything different what you're doing. The proposal for January next year is another 7.6%. We've gotten that from the state of Kansas. So that's that increase of $850,000 plus, not including the one you got last January, which is what John was talking about, get you over a million dollars of expense increase. And again, look back at what your claims ran in 16. 
you ran well, so you helped the other people in the state because your plan actually ran well. And you have really no control to how that can, be a, that can affect your rates. So some terms you ought to know. Um, everyone kind of understands what a deductible is. Um, who knows, everyone know what coinsurance is? Anyone not know what coinsurance is or didn't think they knew? John's the only one who raised his hand. The only one in the room that's honest to me. Huh? The coinsurance on your plan is that 80% you pay after your deductible. So even though you pay a deductible, then after you get done, you pay 20%. The insurance company pays 80%. And that then gets you to your maximum out of pocket. So you have a maximum out of pocket on your plan. And any medical plan, and the, the way the federal government designed it for the the ACA and everything that changed was they limited what the maximum exposure could be to any person under a, an eligible medical plan. So a question for you, go ahead and hit that. What is the current family deductible? Who can tell me that? I got a room of 60 people, you guys are enrolled in the plan. No one has family coverage, these are all the singles? I wrote it down the other day. Huh? I wrote it down the other day when I called. Okay, okay. Nope. Your maximum deductible on a family is $3,000 because 98% of you are on a plan A. Now, if you're on the high deductible health plan, it's different. But most of you in this room are going to have to be on plan A. So you have a $1,000 deductible or $3,000 on a family. That's your current one. Next one. What's the maximum coinsurance you could pay under the current plan that you have? We know what coinsurance is now because we just went over that. It's that 20% you pay after your deductible. How long do you pay 20% till? Sorry? What's the maximum out of pocket? That's my next question. Okay. Okay. I'm making a point that this is really something that affects everyone in the room. And we go look up what these things are after we're going to owe them. And I'd rather people understand what am I doing? What are my, what are my uses expected and stuff like that? So, your maximum coinsurance is 3750 bucks. And go ahead and hit it, Alicia. Because your maximum out of pocket on a single is $5,750 a year. If you have a bad year, you end up with cancer in the hospital, you're having surgeries, you're going to get the 5750 bucks Pretty easily. Um, if you're a family, your maximum exposure is $11,500. Can you guys, am I in your way? Yeah. I'll move. I'd rather, I, that's why I was trying to get you up here. Okay. Um, so, when you go through an open enrollment, and one of the things we did get out of the survey, overwhelmingly, people felt like they would, they would welcome some individual help, not to be sold. We, we're not salespeople, by the way. I forgot to mention that part. We are actually a consultant. When I sit here and talk to you, I'm looking out for John and for the administration say, what's the best thing out there? What can we bring to these people? I don't work for any of the insurance companies. I'm actually right now employed by your district to go do what I did. So me trying to educate you is not to steer you or try to, I want you to understand what, what really goes on here. So when we go into an open enrollment with most of the districts we work with, there's two costs to health insurance. What does it cost me to have it? And what's it going to cost me if I have to use it? Does that matter when you have one plan? You have no, you have no decision there. It's, it is what it is. And you actually get what that is. Okay? Um, things to ask. Are, are you and your family enrolled in the right medical plan? Well, you only have two choices. 98% of you think you're in the right one because you're in the same one. Um, what are the current medical needs? What are you spending money on? Do you ever stop to look at that? Do you get EOBs? Do you go in and look at what your claim spend is? Are there tools that you have to go do that? The other carriers have those tools, and I think, I think they are available also on the Blue Cross Network. Do you take time to look at the family and use the medical plan currently? What benefits do you anticipate needing next year? Are you trying to add junior to the family in the next nine, 10 months? That's a decision you make on what plan you should look at from it when it comes to insurance. Do you take advantage of the ancillary products? There are products that are offered here in the district that you can roll in, but they're not really tied to your decision making that you make at the time of enrollment. The state comes in and says, hey, get on the computer, get this thing done. And what does everyone say? I just want to do what I did last year. 
not think, not have to pay attention, not have to make a decision. I'll just do what I did last year. Has anyone ever said that? You're lying if you tell me you didn't, because I've been doing this for 32 <laughs> years, and that's what you do, okay? So, um, so other things here to consider. Um, do you take advantage of the tax savings and participate in a flexible spending account? Um, I'll tell you, you have 26% from the survey, we found this out, 26% of you participate. Okay, I asked you how many office visit co-pays do you have. I asked you what you spend on prescriptions. And I know we have a 15% of your 500 is more, I mean, that's, that's at least 15% of the people should be in it. So I had people say, well, it's, it's, it seemed like it'd be a hassle or it's confusing or I don't understand that. We want you to understand that. When you can take your current uh, you know, $40 copay and pay for it on a pre-tax basis, you just made it a $30 copay. Because you don't pay taxes on the $40 you paid that copay with. And all you had to think ahead was, well, I've got kids under the age of 10, they're going to the doctor four times a year. That's the statistic, it's pretty solid. If you're, gonna, if you're planning to do your well woman, there's not a copay for that, it's covered. But if you go in and do a checkup, as I ask people, how often do you go? then you should put money aside to pay that expense pre-taxed and it saves you money. It's probably one of the most powerful benefits that the district offers you and we have 26% of the people participating. So we would try to help educate you into why that makes sense individually and give you a worksheet and actually work through that to make maybe a better buying decision. Um, again, what are your future needs? Um, are you planning on surgeries, a baby? Do kids play in sports? Um, are they likely to get hurt? If they're in sports, it's not are they going to get hurt, it's when are they going to get hurt. So you have benefits that you can buy to offset exposure that you might have in the medical plan that you choose. Um, what, is the, what is the expense if something majorly happens? How many people knew it was $5,700 and they walked in here today? Hands. How many people knew that number? One. Okay, that's, that's a pretty easy thing to understand what, what the cost, the maximum exposure is if something happens. And then what do you do to protect yourself to not be in, involved in that cost? So, Mike, yep. I know you said 57, but the family was 11,000 something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, family. Yeah, family was 11,500. Yeah. Yeah, 5,700 for any one individual that goes in with something major. Right. Yeah. Okay. Here's the numbers. Um, your medical and dental, we looked at a report. Actually, I put 5-1. I just caught my typo. It was actually in March. This is what the district was sending out for the medical and dental coverage. So, and I added in the HA, there, HSA, there's a contribution for those people enrolled in Plan B that you get a, uh, some money on a quarterly basis. Um, but you're right, currently spending right now about $6,778,000. July 1, that jumped to 7131000 because the rates went up on the medical. Your district absorbed the expense. You've seen nothing different. You're paying the same thing, but the expense is there. It went up. January 1, the proposed increase with the state is 7.66%. Um, talking to the, the Delta Dental rep, he, he thinks there's a 5%. That has not been announced at the state level, so I'm, I'm prefacing that to tell you that that's there. But that would, that would make that premium jump slightly. So we'd be at $7.6 million. So that's that $885,000 that's going to go up in the next 12 months. I started kind of talking to the district back in February. And nothing's changed. And your utilization was actually the lowest it should have. It's been in three years last year. And your costs are going up over a million dollars in the last year. So... Here's what we came up with. And these are the numbers I told you were going to be small. So if you can't read them, I warned you. Um, but at the bottom here, I'll kind of walk through. On the left-hand side is the current state plan. Shows the coverage there. Most of you are in the far left side. You're in option A. So the coverage there, you got a $40 copay for primary care. 64 specialists, routine vision exams are covered. You're you do not have virtual visits. Uh, preventive routine screenings are covered at 100%. Your individual deductible is $1,000, $2,000 on an employee plus one other person, or $3,000 on a family. Your coinsurance is at 20%. There is not an individual max, so it does go towards your out-of-pocket maximum. The out-of-pocket maximum is $5,750. This is that little state brochure that you guys have. Yes? Can, can, they, can we send this copy? 
PowerPoint out. Can they, John, can you send this to everybody? We're, Are you we to? will have it, and we will end up making it available, but it'll probably be next week, a Monday yeah. or Tuesday. Yeah, yeah I meant like. I, I get you. I walked to the back of the room before we started saying there's going to be small numbers. So, but so that people can review it later. I understand. I understand. Um, so as you go through, you guys on urgent care, you have a $50 copay. Hospital ER is $100. Um, inpatient, the subject deductible and, and coinsurance. Your outpatient deductible and coinsurance. You pay 20% coinsurance on generic drugs, 40% on preferred and non-preferred, or 65% coinsurance. Your rates have gone from $657 on a single to $756 beginning January 1. That's that increase I showed you in the big numbers. Your family's gone from $1598 up to $1810 is what that's gone up. And again, the district absorbed it twice. They absorbed it in January. They did it again in July. It's coming up again next year. Okay. Aetna rolled out three different medical options um, to look at. Here's the advantage of having more than one plan that everyone picks, is you have a choice. You can actually make a decision, how am I using the medical plan and which one makes sense? So I'm gonna show you this, and I'm gonna show you some calculations on numbers, what they mean. But under these plans, the first option there has a $2,000 deductible, the third one has a $3,500 deductible, and the fourth one has a $5,000 deductible. And all you guys remember are deductibles. None of these plans have coinsurance. So what does that mean? It means after you meet a deductible, you don't have to spend another $3,700. The deductible maximum on a family on option one is $4,000. So it's $1,000 higher than your current plan. So your current plan is $3,000 on a family. This is four, but you don't have any coinsurance. So your out-of-pocket maximum on this plan is $4,000 versus $5,750. Your office visit to go see your doctor is 20 instead of 40. That's half as much. That will affect more people in this district than the deductible. If we, did, if we had the stats, which I generally get from most every school I work with, I would tell you that 70% of this group does not hit their deductible. And I'm talking about the members. So not just you, but your spouse doesn't, your three kids, they don't hit it either. So you don't hit that deductible. So you're paying for that deductible, and this district's paying for that deductible, and it's a high amount of money, and they're paying all of it, and you guys would like to have a raise, but what's absorbing that is we have this one plan that's super expensive. It's a great plan, but is it really what everyone needs? So if you go back to the thought test, how am I going to use the plan? You got a question? You, you don't insurance shop every year. You guys haven't shopped, actually. Last year, when your, your contract came up, the folks here, not, probably not knowing any better, they, they asked Blue Cross to come in and look at what are we doing. So Blue Cross went out to show you what they could do with Blue Cross, and you already have Blue Cross. And they said, oh, you're good where you are. Well, so we're, we're still talking. That's why we're still talking is, was it really good where you are? So, no, the district does not have to shop every year. They don't have to change anything. But what I'm asking then, like, if we were to decide to do something different than what we have, are we locked in? No. No. If you decide to move, you, 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 it's a one-year deal. You look at what's going on. At least you have the information then of how the plan's working, where you're spending money, how to design coverage, that you could make plans that make more sense to the use of the group. Right now, it's just all an unknown and you just get increases. That's, that's kind of the problem with it, is you don't have any information to say, hey, was this a good plan? Hey, if it wasn't for that one, we had one large claim, and that's fine if you have a large claim. I have a, a college right now. They have a newborn that's looking at a transplant type surgery. The estimated cost on it is $1.5 million. The entire college medical premiums that they pay are 400, are 4.3 million. And they have one claim that's going to be 1.5. But they're in a pooled situation. You know, they have a limitation of how much of that's going to count against them. And here, that, if you had a 1.5 million, it, included, it was included in the claims. And we don't know that it got pooled out with other 
large claims within an insurance carrier. It just was part of your claims. Hence is why one year you're at 7.5 and then you're at 5.7. Somewhere we had something that was large, but it all got counted if you looked at it. Question. We're, we're considering it. it it'll, it'll be based on there. There's a there's a uh, a clause to get out of the state account. You can, but you got we got to balance. Is it better to get out and and, and absorb an exposure expense, and 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 be where we're currently at, or just keep paying, and hoping it gets better? And it's it's really not going to. I mean, as as more people leave the state, it's not going to get better. And there, we have more people getting out of this than they're getting into it. But if we stay in the, con in the contract called over, how long are these quotes good for? Your rates? Yeah, these, yeah, the quotes from the other, the other quote, These quotes are good for a year, the same way yours are now. Yeah, so your rates that you have right now from Blue Cross, they were good. They actually went up in July. They're proposed to go up again in 2018 by 7.6%. That's the number we know. The numbers I have, we're proposing this goes into effect in December, not January, but in December. And they would, they would actually run for a full year and what we would get claim information and information to be able to look at on the renewal. That's the advantage of it. And you, people are gonna have more choice. I'll, I'll get to some of the advantage for you and for them, for this, for this school. Yes? We, we don't have one here and that thought has come up. It, wouldn't, it would not be an issue to put one on, but there's not one in the three we're looking at at this moment, okay? Had a question over here. Uh, physicians in this area, are they acceptable to that? The, yeah, we, that quote. Well, here's the deal. Um, Aetna, I mean, their reimbursements are probably as high or, or just as high as what Blue Cross are. So it's really no difference to them. Um, Blue Cross is, I mean, everyone, in, you know, they tell you 100% of the hospitals are in it. And, you know, all the doctors are in it. And that's a great deal that your doctor's in. Here's what I'll tell you. Your doctor's in it. Um, they're getting paid. Um, you know, when, they, when you go and have claims, I, if you don't even work for the city, I don't handle the city account, I'll tell you that. But my understanding from talking to people in town, it's actually been with them for three years and it's been, it's been fine. So um, the, you know, the doctors to me is they need to be in the network and we've investigated that or I wouldn't be up here saying 20% of you are you gonna lose your doctor. I wouldn't be up here. I'd say it's not a, it's not a move. You're not gonna do it in, a, in the middle of a contract. But that's not the case. They're all in it. <clears throat> as you go down the Aetna plan, some of the advantages of it, there are some, there are some things that are not as strong, and I'll, and I'll make sure I, I, I touch on those. The difference between these three plans um, I will hit on, they're all virtually the same except the deductible. So you have a $20 copay. If you go to see a specialist, this plan has a $40 copay. Your current plan is $60, but this one you hit the deductible you pay for the specialist visit till you get your deductible, then it goes to a $40, deduct or $40 copay. Your routine visits are covered 100%. This plan has what's called virtual visits. Anyone live outside of Hayes and you drive a ways to get to the doctor? Okay. Okay, well, if you, do you drive a ways to get to the doctor? They have virtual visits, which is anyone's heard Teladoc. A lot of the districts out in western Kansas are buying that. It's included here. You're sick on, you know, sick Friday night, you start getting feeling bad and you're feeling terrible on Saturday. You can actually phone in, you go online, you fill out some information. So a doctor will call you back. You can FaceTime on your phone or FaceTime on your iPad. Here's what's going on. Here's, here's what I have happening. They can actually give you advice, sit, bite, write you a prescription. Someone can go to pick up the pharmacy, you never have to leave your house. That's available in here for a $20 copay. So if you have a kid who got into poison ivy, show them the poison ivy, it's 20 bucks to do that. It's a Kansas-based doctor. May not be, it's not your doctor, but it's a, it's a doctor. But who do you see at the ER? A doctor, so. But that's available. The, again, the deductible at 3,500, it's 7,000 on a family. Um, zero coinsurance. Your max amount of pocket is 4,000, 8,000. Your outpatient lab and x-ray is covered. Um, at 100%. If you're doing it in the doctor's office, it's covered 100%, very similar to the state plan. They have that lab. If you're going to a lab outside of your doctor's office, it is subject to the deductible. Um, 
The urgent care facilities, this one has the $40 copays. I'm not, do you guys have it? The, the, you don't have a Dillon's here, right? You do have Dillon's. Do they have the little, the little clinic in Dillon's here? It's not that big yet, okay. Do you have Walgreens? Does Walgreens have the little clinic inside theirs here? No, okay. Okay. The, uh, so urgent care facilities, they are subject to a $40 copay, again, after the deductible. ER is higher, it's a $200 copay after the deductible. You're at 100 right now. Your inpatient hospital services, if you go into the hospital under this plan, you would pay $2,000 plus $250 for the admission to the hospital. That's your expense. That's your total expense. That is, I guarantee you, probably half the cost of going to the hospital under your current plan. Because your current plan, you're going to hit your deductible. I know in Wichita, the average admission to a hospital in Wichita is $13,000. The average admission. So if you're paying 1000 and 20% of 12000 okay, you're exceeding the cost of this plan every time. So there's an advantage. Not everyone goes to the hospital. A very small percent of people will. Under prescriptions, under option one, we match the same prescription drug program that the, you guys have now. It's a 20% it's a generic, 40% on the uh, brand and, and brand name, and 65% on the uh, preferred uh, non, non-formulary drugs. I have the rates here. They're very small, but I have another comparison I'll show you the rates on. The difference of the other two plans simply is deductible, and then the prescriptions are different under options two and three that I'm showing you here. Under option two and three, they have co-payments for generic drugs. The most you pay is three bucks the, uh, on, a, on a generic. If it's a, if it's a, a non-formulary or drug, it's a $15 maximum. So it's three or five, 15. You know what it's gonna be when you go get a, a prescription. It's not a percent. There's a $30 copay on name brands that they're subject to after the deductible. So if you're someone who takes name brand drugs, you know you're taking that, you're on a maintenance drug, you're doing that, your option is going to be option number one. There isn't going to be a savings that we're going to show you to, to change that plan. So my people who know I'm in the 15% club and that's okay, I'm going to buy option one. I have less out-of-pocket exposure. I still have the same drug coverage I have today. I pay half as much to go see the doctor when I see my primary doctor and that plan is very similarly priced to where you're at today. These other plans are going to show some savings because I have people who go to the doctor once a year. I have people who never go to the doctor in this group. And all they're doing is they're not, they're, they're basically, their, their cost is going into a, into a plan that they're not seeing a cost. Blue Cross's quote was on the right hand side here. All I need to tell you is their family plan came in at $2,700 a month and we're comparing that to 1800 on blue on uh, the current state plan or the Aetna plan. Okay. I want to understand so far. We are currently part of a state plan, which is a big group. If we go with it, then we would be our own group. That's a correct. Smaller group. Um, with a state plan, we're just a year in, so we have some time. After, if we back out of that, we would be locked out for seven yes. years. Aetna is a year to year thing that we have to negotiate. Mm -hmm. At some point, could they decide they do not like our usage and, and say we cannot be part of their plan? No, they're not going to kick you out. Can they? No, well, no. The way they have to, they have to, you're guaranteed insurable, no matter who you have. They're going to make the rates justifiable to the claims. Okay, and do okay. they typically go up like other insurance companies? I'm going to answer your question on the next slide, okay? Great. Okay. I'm sorry, it'll be a couple slides. Right, what I put right here is, this is your, your current plans again. We currently have 309 employees that are single, 53 couples, 81 employee and children, and 98 families. That's the current rates on the dental. They, they may be off some because we don't have an absolute number that we know what the dental costs are in the district, but um, it's what you're paying. Um, this is the proposed rates that I have for you guys for next year. It's 410000 it's, it's at least $50,000 less than what you're paying today. And that's with no change in the plan you have. It's just rating your group on its own. So right off the bat, I can tell you from a standpoint of your utilization, what you're getting from the state and what you got on your own was over a $50,000 savings to keep the same thing you have. 
but just be your own group. Because it's based on your utilization. You're, you're lower utilizers, but you're paying for everyone who isn't in the big group. Yep, and if you already have one large claim, you're protected from pooling that helps you with that. So most of the districts your size in the state are not in the state plan. You're unique that you are. We're protected from pooling. Explain that. What does that mean? Pooling is if you have a really large claim, say you have a, a, a six hundred thousand dollar claim, Aetna is gonna look at that claim and in their contract they're only gonna apply two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of that claim towards your experience. And they're going to pull that with other companies, other companies that are insured in the state of Kansas, so they lower the risk. So you can't have a million dollar claim that blows it out of the water. And is that at their discretion or is that part of our contract? That's part of your contract. It's in the contract. It was in the information I, I handed out to you guys. It was part of that. The pooling. You'll, yeah, I can show you where it's at. The medical contributions right now, um, if, if the... School district kept them the same. You're currently at change in July. You're at $737 on a single and $1,241. So the district's contribution currently is $6,189,000. Your dental would be $440. So the total cost for the, for the district to look at this contribution, regardless of what plan you chose, and pay the dental is $6,630,000. That's, that's where the number comes from. So if you go down below here, there's red numbers and there's black numbers. I made a comparison. If someone stayed with the Blue Cross plan on a single, um, it's, it would actually be $224 a year more expensive to go to the Aetna plan. Okay, your exposure is $2,250 less. You pay half as much to go to the doctor. So there, but there's 309 people that they, but they have other options. If you're an employee and spouse, the cost is $471 less. Employee and children is $228, and this is annually, so it's not huge. Um, families, it's $161 more to go with the Aetna plan, on, on the richest plan. If someone um, went to the Blue Cross plan versus the $3,500 plan, the middle one, again, which the out-of-pocket exposure is no different than where you are today, it's just how you get there. If you have a hospitalization, you're still not going to be you're not going to you're going to be better off on that plan than option one with Blue Cross. You save six hundred ninety-one dollars a year as a single to go to that option. Seven hundred fifty-eight dollars on an employee and spouse. Five hundred forty-one dollars on employee and children, and a family would put twelve hundred dollars into their discretional income to go to that option. If you go to a five thousand dollar plan, again the five thousand dollar plan. The, your maximum exposure is $250 higher than it is today under your Blue Cross plan. It's just, you don't get to a deductible if you're just going to the doctor. If you're doing your well woman exam, you're doing your checkups, you're buying prescriptions, you're, you're going to pay co-pays. So it's not going to affect you regardless. If you don't hit a $1,000 deductible, but you're paying $915 not to hit a, hit a deductible, then that doesn't make sense. Because at $900, you don't get back because you didn't spend it. So the difference on the, the 2000, uh, the Blue Cross plan on the 5000 is $1,100 to a single, $3,000, almost $3,100 to an employee and spouse, $2,600 to employee and children, and $2,900 to a family. So my folks who have, are, are really healthy, and they say, man, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really super healthy, and you know, the, the plan is great, but we really don't use that. In this survey, I asked you, how would you rate your health? Okay, 30% of you, excellent. 60% of you, good. Another 19% fair, and I had one person put poor out of the total, the total survey. So everyone here thinks, and, and the reason, you know, if you're doing the wellness stuff, you think you're in good shape, then a lot of you are maybe overinsured in the plan you have, although it's free, it's, it's, a, it's something that's keeping you from having raises. It's part of the expense of the district. So flip to the page. This will get to your question that you asked about. These, this is five other school districts. I put a, you can figure it out if you want to by the initial, G, D, M, C, W, and L. This is, this is the carrier in, in 16, and this is their carrier they're renewing in 2017. 
G offers five medical options. So when you ask the question, could you add a high deductible, we, we can do that. But it, was, it wasn't, with 20 people currently doing it, it wasn't the biggest thing on the, on, on the page. They offer five medical plans. The variance to a single person enrolling, from rolling in option one or option five, is $2,600 a year. On a family, they're making a $5,484 decision. Their rate increase this year was a plus 5%. They have Aetna. I have another option here. This, this district here is a 6A school. They were with Aetna. They switched February 1 to United Healthcare. They have not been with Blue Cross for 25 years. Um, they have five medical plans. Their variance on a single plan is $600. On a family, it's $3,000. So when they come in the open enrollment and they have five medical plans to choose from, it makes a difference how they're using the medical plan. How are you using it? What's going to happen next year? What do you really think is going to happen? Let's pick the plan that makes sense. What I pay in premium and what's my exposure going to be? You have, you have the ability to make decisions. You really don't here is, is the problem. You can go on down, but if you look over on the right hand side, you, you talked about the increase. Here's a minus one increase this year. That's a, five, that's a 6A school. Here's a plus 2%. Um, that's a 4A school, and here's a minus 10%, and that's a 4A school within 60 miles of you. And they switched from Blue Cross to United. Yep. And, but this one... So you can change. I mean, the thing is, if, 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 here's what happens with health insurance. You have a bad year. The guy who paid the claims looks at it and says, okay, I had a bad year. I'm only, I'm, I can only hit you for exposure of this much money, so here's, here's the renewal. If we have the information, can we make changes? What can we do to make the plan better? Where was our use actually changing the plan? You have decisions to make that actually you can make them as a business decision. If it doesn't make sense. On that bottom one there, and all that L, I'll just tell you, stands for Larnard. They were with Blue Cross for 25 years. Switched, uh, they should have switched last year, they didn't. Blue Cross came in last year, offered a 14% rate increase. We got involved, worked with them. The rate increase went down to 5%. This year they came back out, they, they wanted to offer a 0.46% rate increase. So four tenths of a percent increase, but they added stuff back in they should have, they took out last year, they said. So we called them on it and said, okay, you're not, you're, one, you're showing claims that weren't there because you didn't have dental, and you showed dental claims and stuff, we caught their stuff. We got them to come down to a minus 4.6%. It said, that's the best you can do. What you added in, you're gonna take back out. The group was running at a 67% loss ratio United Health came in, they offered a plan that has no co-pays. You go to the doctor, there's no copay, And they, have, they are gonna have four or three different medical plans to choose from with deductibles. A lot of them last year changed their deductibles something higher because it was the same thing. They all went to the same plan and the way it was priced is there wasn't enough difference to change it. The other companies priced it differently. So there's something out there besides what you have. And yeah, you have someone that works for you to make sure that you get, that gets taken care of. So this, these are five perfect examples just happened in the last two months. And we, I, I bring 30 of them, and it's not going to be any different. Yes? Did they change their benefits? No. No. None of these are due to benefit changes. Hey, Mike. Yep. Why didn't United provide something for us that just wasn't an option? Or? They, they, did, they could not. I mean, they, they, we, they were sent the information. They could not. We just didn't have... The, the information we had to try to go out and represent your district was pathetic. I mean, we had, here's what your annual costs were by month. And, and you have a month, you're going along, you're paying 500000 in claims, and all of a sudden it goes to $1.2 Well, what happened? They, they want to know if they're going to insure it, and we go, we don't know. Trace, how many times did I call you? I kept getting, okay, what, what's this? Why did we have this? So I was bothering her saying, give me information. They're asking, but we just didn't have, we, the, the problem with the current situation is you have no information to make any decisions and you just get the decision made and handed to you and none of them have been negative. They've all been going up. That's the problem. And to think it's just going to change because you want it to change, it's not going to. So the only way it's going to change is you guys are going to have to make the change. Other questions? Question, I'm sorry. Because it's 
group insurance. And if we would change from year to year based on availability, there is no pre-existing condition cost? There, there have been no pre-existing conditions on health insurance for the last five years. Anywhere. Anywhere. Okay. Yep. Question. It's my understanding that with Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can go anywhere in the United States, any state, it is accepted. Can you say you can find a in-network provider. It gets better. Say the same with Aetna and it know. gets better. Aetna has a national network that they own. The same company has a network throughout the United States. It's theirs. Blue Cross and Blue Shield has a network in Kansas. If you have a claim down in Oklahoma, they have to work with the, uh, the Blue Cross and Blue Shield company in Oklahoma, process your claim, they pay them to process it, they pay them additional to process it, to use the network, and they process the claim. The claim expense goes against the experience, and you pay for it. But I think Aetna is pulled out of California. Um, Blue, Blue Cross is not in, I think, 20-some states in the United States, just so you know that, too. I don't, I don't think they pull out of California in health insurance. I think they pull out of California in the exchange, same as they did in, in Kansas. So, know, know what you're, when you're hearing that, know what you're, you're, they're saying. I mean, they've gotten out of a lot of different states in the, the private exchanges. That's what, I think that's what, if you're li his, listening to ra the radio or the TV, that's what they're all talking about, I promise you. So, okay, so, other question, I'm sorry. Uh, what about, like, the vision and the dental and stuff? I know my mom has United Healthcare and her husband's a manager in Kansas City, and there's a lot of providers there. Mm -hmm. But like to go get to the dentist, even she has to go to Stockton. To go to an eye doctor, she has to go to Salina. Do you know what the dental and the vision is with Aetna about providers around here? Okay, the dental will be Delta Dental, the same one you have today. No change in the benefits, matched 100%, same coverage, everything's the same. For this year, or for a year? Well, for a year with the state. It's, it's, it is, it's for this year, the proposal I showed you the numbers on is the exact same plan you have today. Yeah, yeah, and we'll, I'm going to show you some stuff here in just a second on dental. Okay, but yeah, it's the same plan, and the rates are actually gone down. Okay, so what does the district get out of a switch? You do get utilization. How the plan's working, we'll at least know that. Um, Aetna did offer a $10,000 incentive to add to the district's wellness plan. So along with keeping, if you do the wellness the, the biometric screenings, they provide those for you, and that does not go against your experience. They pay for that. They're going to offer $10,000 for the district to have their wellness committee to use on go, uh, incentives. What, if you guys have a contest or whatever, that can be prizes, whatever. As long as it's used for wellness, they're going to give you the money for that. They also, in their wellness program, include... Um, you can, uh, do the, if you do the biometric screens, you go online, they're going to give you $50 per employee and per spouse to participate in the biometric screening. So you not only get a holiday on the benefits or on the, on the premiums, you would get something for doing it in advance. So you, can, you want to order a card to go to Starbucks and get coffee, you can get a $50 Starbucks card. But that's included in the proposal. Um, and that's actually down in the, what the employee gets. More medical options, you at least are going to have some choice. We have three up here. If we end up adding a high deductible because we have folks who really want to stay in that, that's, that's possible. It's not a big deal to do that. What do the employees get? The ability to save some money out of their pockets, um, being able to choose between plans. Right now, you don't have that option. Lower office visit co-pays to see your physician. There's no co-insurance after the deductible. You have lower out-of-pocket maximums. So at the end of the day, if you have a really bad year, these plans are better. Um, you get the uh, opportunity to earn the $50 for the self and the spouse for participating in the wellness. You have Teladoc, which is the ability to stay at home if you want to just call the doc and get, and get help at home. The same network, same facilities that you have today. We, we've, done this, we've done the research. We'll, we'll provide you the network, but it's the same. You have, a, again, a 24-7 nurse line that you can use. And Aetna has technology and tools that you don't have today. And I could spend an hour talking about the tools, but they have mobile apps. If you go to your doctor and the doctor says, hey, you need to, we need to get an MRI, and you go, okay, and it's on your knee, and you put, go on your phone, you pull up that app, you put in MRI, it will tell you mileage from here what the cost is to go have the MRI. So it'll tell you what your place here in town charges. 
If there's another place 30 miles away, what they charge to do one, in Wichita, you'll get 10 of them within five miles. And it'll have all their prices. You have the ability to get technology like that with this plant, which you don't have now. Again, there's, there's small numbers. This is basically a, is the information of where you were up until July in that top left-hand side. You're, these were the contributions by employees. 7-1, your contributions stayed the same. If you'll notice, the middle number went up for the, for the district. January 1, if the district kept that number the same as it is today, and this is just a hypothetical, no one's made a decision, that's what it is, that's, that's something you guys will, will be signing in negotiations. But if they made a decision to keep it the same, that would be a contribution for health insurance, 56, 405, 276, 711. The Aetna plans are on the right-hand side, option to 2,000, 35, and 5. Again, the single's higher, but if you start looking at the couples, the employee and children, you go to the other options. The, the savings was on that other sheet, the red numbers I showed you. It's $3,000 on a family to make that decision if you, if you, if you wanted to make that change. Okay, you want to go to the next page, formulation? You asked the question about the dental. This is your current plans. This is the current plans that we proposed. Delta did give us claims information on your group. Um, we did get that from them. I can share some of it with you. Um, your, uh, is that on the next page? Yeah, anyway, this is the same plan you have. So I, I've shown it here. These are the rates. I showed you these rates calculated out for a year, about four screens back. If you go to the next page here, Again, your premiums that you paid in 2015, your claims, and that was the difference with the state. Last, in 16, you paid 447, you had 309,000, that was the difference with the state. Um, you have some dental, with the, with the district absorbing the $12, your exposure, I think, actually grew some. But there is a significant savings here on just the dental to make the move outside of the state. Usage-wise, I can tell you 250 of you did not spend $1,000 on dental. 20 of you spent between $1,000 and 1500 and we had 15 people that spent between $1,500 and $1,700. This is a very rich plan on dental, the, the out-of-pocket max. And your out-of-pocket does not include your preventive and diagnostic. So it's a very rich plan. We're still proposing the Premier and Basic. If you go to the dentist at least once a year, then everything's paid in Premier. They want you to do cleanings. Don't let them deteriorate so when you go in, it's a crown. Do them. So that's the plan you have. Interesting, 31% of your usage is diagnostic and 28 preventative. So that's almost 60% almost of your, your spend on dental is good. If you're doing diagnostic and preventive services. You have 19% for restoratives, so you're doing fillings. You had 4% on endodontics, which are root canals. Your periodontics are Z's of the gums. You guys must be flossing because it's only 1.72%. Um, prosthodontics are crowns, bridges, partials. You're at 2.8%. Um, oral surgery was 5%. And orthodontic. You guys have an orthodontic benefit that is not heavily used. So if you have a child, I'm not, I'm not the, grim, the grim ripper, but the way you're, that's been priced into your plan, you're paying a lot more to have the orthodontic available than you're getting out of a benefit. So at some point in time, I would talk to you that most school districts don't ortho or offer orthodontic coverage. It got offered because you're with the state. If you have, I mean, if we have 28 people benefiting by it and 541 people paying more premiums for it, they're paying for the 28 people and times three times. And if you participate right there in those 21 people just did the, the uh, flexible spending, you're saving 30% on the cost of orthodontics, just basically putting the money aside and paying your orthodontist with that. And hopefully everyone who's doing braces is also doing that. You have a blank page there. Okay, basically. On the, we did look at some of the other benefits just to show you kind of what's out there, why we were looking. I told John, you know, to me, when you sit down every year and you look at your benefits and open enrollment, again, right now, the state sends out and says, hey, you need to enroll in the medical, dental, and the vision. Get that enrolled. Go online. Do that. And then American Fidelity comes out, and they have a bunch of products. We have an Aflac product in here. And we have people who buy a lot of these products. 
mean, your, your billing on the American Fidelity is a half a million dollars that you guys spend a year on ancillary products. So we do have people participating. We looked at the basic life insurance. Um, what we're paying for the principal plan was $2.08 an employee. The, the district would save about $3,200 switching that. Not a big, not a huge savings, but it's life insurance on term life. If you pass away, it pays, and that's how it works. So there's not like one's better than the other. They're, they're all A-plus rate, a rated companies that we deal with. On the voluntary life, we looked at your voluntary life. That's been in here for quite a while with principal. So what happened is, when you came to work, you're a young teacher, say, I don't need life insurance. You didn't enroll. Now if you want to enroll, you have to meet evidence of insurability to buy your policy. The plan you have currently, you can buy up to 150000 no questions asked, if you did it when you started working here. If we offered a different plan, you would get that opportunity again to go say, okay, I'm going to up my life insurance, I'm going to buy more. The rate would be 10% less than what you're paying today, and you can buy up to $200,000 guaranteed issue versus 150 if you wanted to. So it's 10% less in cost. So every, everyone would save money out of their paycheck that's buying life insurance. I'm not here to sell it to you. I'm saying we have people that are doing it. Quite a few of you are doing it, and this would offer a savings to you. The short-term disability. Um, your plan, you look in the book. I do insurance, and it's confusing. Okay? It's if you make between this number and this number, here's the benefit and here's the cost. So you can get anywhere from 60% of your benefit to 70% of your benefit, just depending on where that falls in that salary range. So I did an example to show you. I picked five employees. If these are your initials, and that looks like the amount of premium you're paying, I'm not giving your name away, but I got these off of the billing. KA there right now has a current benefit on disability of $715 per week if they go out on disability. They're paying $83 a month for that. The plan that I went and found out in the marketplace, you would, you would have a $684 benefit. The reason it's less is it's not that span. It's, it's exactly 66 and two thirds of that person's income. So this person falls in the middle of the range. But their premiums would be $33 a month instead of $83 a month, okay? So if you had to pay $25 a month for health insurance, that just paid for it. There's 166 of you that have disability. It doesn't change, it, they, they all look the same. MD, you have a $530 benefit, you're paying $62. This would be $522, it costs you 25 bucks. That's $438 a year you save having same disability coverage, it pays the same way. JT, paying $51 under the new plan, you're paying 90 now. EY is, um, you know, someone obviously, they're paying $27, their benefit's only $230 a week, but they're, they're gonna save $184 a year. So those are other things. So when you're sitting down and you look at my benefits, I say, okay, here's what health insurance is costing me. What are my needs? Yeah, I mean, I need, probably need disability. If you've been here for 10 years, you have sick leave and stuff built up, you don't need to buy a disability plan that pays first day. They're much more expensive and you don't need to do that. We have a lot of people who actually buy a first day plan. I can't see why you do that when the premiums are so much higher than what you possibly would get out of a benefit and to, to collect. Because you have a sick day and a personal day in the district to file for that. And you don't, you don't really collect on both. So. Another one we looked at, we have quite a few people doing the cancer plans, and the cancer plans are personal. I don't, if, if they stay in the district, that's great, but they've been around so long that there's very new things out there. Um, there are group products now that have, you, like you guys have critical illness and cancer and hospital, all these things that's different riders. If you buy them all, you're in the Tupperware store and you're picking them all and it gets real expensive real fast. Um, we do have people spending $79 a month for a cancer plan. It has basically no, there's no first up benefit, but it pays you if you have chemotherapy, it pays you for transplantation, it pays for all these things. Here's what I'll tell you. Having had a wife at the age of 40 who had breast cancer, went through unbelievable issues, and ended up having to have a double mastectomy out of the whole thing, I've seen all the things you can go into the doctors and have surgeries and do stuff for. The last thing on my mind was sitting down and filling out paperwork because we went and had chemotherapy. I just, that does. So the new plans that came out, 
The critical illness plans cover heart attacks, strokes, cancer, organ transplant, end-stage renal, ALS, bone marrow transplants, cardiac arrest, benign brain tumors, and 13 other conditions partially. If you're diagnosed with one of those things, you get a $10,000 check, and that's all you have to file. You can buy a plan that you have today and get a $10,000 check up front, but you'll pay three times as much, and it's only for cancer. So there's other plans that I would probably introduce to show you guys there may be a better way to look at this. This one has guaranteed issue up to $20,000. I personally own a $30,000 critical illness plan. I was able to buy it because my wife's had cancer, but it was guaranteed issue when they offered it through my company. Would not turn you down so you could have it. My wife, having had cancer, has a better chance of having it again because you've had it, okay? So I bought that policy. She's covered under that policy. This is the same thing I would be proposing. Guaranteed issue, no waiting periods, no pre-existing conditions. You file one claim. You're diagnosed. It pays you 10 or 20,000. After six months, if you had cancer this year, and next year you have a heart attack, it pays again. And it resets. And it never runs out. We have plans that they only pay once and they only pay 50% the next time. Your current plan pays once and it's over under critical illness. So this again is a place where there are some savings that people could look at and what they're doing. The other one I didn't get finalized because I didn't get all the numbers in is there's group accident plans. We have quite a few people taking accident plans of different levels. Every one of them, I have a savings that I show the employees for better coverage with wellness benefits. So that is the presentation. I threw tons of information at you. Having been doing this for 32 years, you're going to remember 15 minutes, and I talked way longer than that. So I, I appreciate your time coming out. Um, yeah, I'll hang around this evening. We have another meeting at 7, but I'm around. If you guys have personal questions you want to ask, you want to look at something up close, that's fine. If you don't want to ask a personal question in the group, come ask me. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to show you there's other ways to look at this and, and try to help educate you on what's out there. We do this. We've got, in the next month, we've got seven school districts we're going through this whole process where we walk through this with and we offer one-on-ones we have a staff of people that do it none of us are commissioned so we don't get paid if you enroll in summer you don't enroll in it we just want the group to be happy so john continues to employ me thank you very much do the pre-enrollment in october and things like that will you have somebody here that will answer questions that we have this Basically, I feel like the last few years, we've had to make... Yeah, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the selling points that we bring to you guys is we have an entire staff that we would actually put a website together that has everything on here and be actually you can go look at that. You get all the information you want to have. We would have meetings like this to explain it if you want to bring your spouse in. We want you to engage and understand what you're spending and what you're getting. I mean, if you guys go back, I was expecting at least half the people to tell me at least you knew your deductible. That one blew me away. We didn't have that, or else you're scared to raise your arm. I am because I'm wet. But uh, the, uh, if, you're, uh, if you don't know your out-of-pocket max, we, we want you to understand that. If you, in, at the end of the day, you spend more time worrying about the loaf of bread you're buying than what you're spending on health insurance. And, 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 and it's, it's, I'm going to say... It's okay to be in the 15% club. There's a plan here that's better than what you have, but not all of you need to be in that, op that one plan. There's better plans and a better way of offsetting that cost. Good one, one thing that was not mentioned at the front end, which I probably should have shared, is the understanding that, uh, although mentioning negotiations, negotiations is not really talking about the idea of pulling away that, that full uh, single insurance or, or even what's being put into the family. That's not what we're talking about, because that's planned. I mean, that's the benefit. That's what's planned. Whether it's Blue Cross Blue Rather. Shield, that's the single that's being paid, or whether it's whether it's Aetna. So that's not the issue as far as our conversation. The issue ends up being just a matter again the, the flexibility and possibilities in the future. If you feel like you get, you no, know, no matter how you feel at this moment, it'd be great if you would talk to others to come to the other meetings because tonight at 7 and then the 2 tomorrow and then the 2 on Monday, the more people that come and hear it, 
is going to be very valuable. We will get this information. We're videoing it, and we're going to end up having the slide presentation available as well. Those are things that we plan to try to get out over the next week and have as much information out there as possible for you to look at and try to end up uh, making a decision yourself. The one thing that is nice that you ended up asking, which is right on target, is the idea that the example that Mike gave is perfect from the disability of an individual in the first day taking that, which is the most expensive disability. Why did they do it? The only reason I think they did is because they didn't understand it is because it's the most expensive one and I want as much coverage as I can with it. If you would have been told how it really works and really the, the, the most you need is you got to consider your sick leave. You I mean, you have to consider other things which some people just don't think that way when they're trying to buy something. There's some people that buy it because I want the best. Well, the best is the most expensive. Not necessarily. You know, it's just a matter, and that's what we're trying to end up sharing. And uh, really appreciate uh, this evening. Thank you very much, Mike. Mm -hmm.